Hi, this is Mrs. Cooper again, um, today with a video on Literature Paper 1, Section A, Modern Prose or Drama, and we're looking at Animal Farm. Today, I'm going to be focusing uh, purely on Part B, um, because I think this is quite a demanding question. So, for Part B, you should be spending 30 minutes, however, it is still the same amount of marks as Part A. So, the format of this question will always be to explore another moment in Animal Farm that shows something. And the something, the theme, will always link to the theme that you've already explored for part A. Okay? However, another moment means another moment. So you must not discuss the extract that you've been given, um, or indeed the unseen extract. Um, so you need to be thinking of moments that you can use here. So this is quite a demanding question because you're assessed on AO1 um, using quotations um, and showing your understanding of the text and AO2 analyzing language form and structure but you don't have an extract in front of you and you won't have the book because this is a closed um, book exam so you do need to go away and memorize key quotations um, if you haven't done so already not just memorize them but understand what type of language devices are used or other types of language devices, structural features, features of form that you can wheel out for um, this exam question. So it is quite difficult. However, I've advised my students to pick um, about six key quotations from each text to write down on memo cards that they can actually do this with and explore the language form structure. And if you're struggling to find your key quotations, just simply go online. There's loads of stuff about Animal Farm online. I simply typed in Animal Farm key quotations, and it's come up here with Spark Notes. Not only has it given me the key quotations, but it's also analyzing it for me. So the work is there for you. Um, make sure that you go and do that in preparation for that exam. Okay, so this is the question that we're looking at today. Explore another moment in Animal Farm that shows how Napoleon uses violence against others on the farm. And the extract is from when Napoleon calls the animals to confess their betrayal, the one where the hens rebel and he slaughters lots of animals. So I definitely wouldn't be discussing that in my answer. So the first thing that I would do, and I'd advise you to do this in all of your exams, is make a plan. So I need to start by choosing at least two moments that I can discuss in my answer for part B. Don't just choose one. I'd say two is best because you can go into real detail, but you've done more than one moment. So the, the moments that spring to mind, that in my mind, that are particularly violent um, are when Snowball is chased off the farm. Um, so that's right towards the beginning of the book over the disagreement of the windmill. And also um, toward the end of the book when Boxer is um, violently dragged away to be killed at the glue factory. So I'm breaking down my moments into language, what quotes I can remember, um, what points of analysis I can include, form and structure for each moment. So this is what I've done already. So moment one, when Snowball is chased away, I have remembered, like most moments in Animal Farm where violence is um, referred to, that there's graphic imagery. Imagery is a kind of catch-all device where um, every single book will use imagery, that's words used to create a picture. And graphic means it's um, very explicit. And um, we do see it here when um, Snowball is chased away. Um, I've put some notes that I could talk to about character name here. Character name is when the writer uses um, the name of the characters to reveal clues about what they are like. And both Charles Dickens and uh, George Orwell do this. Snowball um, has connotations with innocence and it's linked with white, but also a snowball is something that um, is a situation that spirals out of control. We might say that Napoleon's power snowballs out of control. Um, and obviously Napoleon is um, a reference to the unfair leader Napoleon Bonaparte. Um, I've also remembered how the Orwell uses the seasons um, to have symbolic meaning, so it's winter here, so we know that that means something bad's going to happen. Um, and also, Squealer is always used to mop up the effects of Napoleon's actions as a tool of propaganda. Quotes that I could remember were, were Napoleon uttering a high-pitched whimper, and the description of the dogs as wearing um, brass-studded collars and coming bounding into the barn. So I've then thought about um, what I'd say in my analysis. So whimper is onomatopoeia. 
and um, the enormous is adjective and has connotations of violence. I've got the verb bounding um, as revealing their ferociousness. And then for form, obviously, um, it's a political allegory. It's also a fable, and it delivers a moral about power. And for structure, I remembered that this, for me, this action of Napoleon um, expelling Snowball was very sudden and very impulsive, and that is structure. It's, there's not a build-up to it. It seems to happen very quickly. Um, and I've put a little bit about dialogue here, how Napoleon speaks less and takes more action than Snowball. And of course, tension um, is a key word there. For Boxer, I've um, made reference to emotive language. This is a very, very emotive episode, so I'd definitely be talking about that. Again, I thought I could talk about character name, that a boxer has strength over intellect, and we see that to be um, Boxer's downfall here. I've talked about the use of tragic irony, that, Snowball, uh, that Boxer is a real loyal um, proponent of uh, Napoleon, and yet he is the one that really suffers the most. Again, symbolism of the seasons is used, um, and the fact that Boxer's motto, I will always work harder, is actually his hamasha, a hamasha is your tragic flaw. So his um, desire to work harder does actually lead to his own downfall. Um, so I could talk about that in language. I've got some quotes here. I've mentioned again that it's a political allegory, and in my structure points, I've talked that foreshadowing is used. It's a very dramatic moment. It's a climax, if you will. Okay, now I've done my planning, it makes writing up my answer a lot quicker and a lot more easy. So I started by saying, um, addressing the question straight away, another moment when Napoleon uses violence against others um, is in his impulsive expulsion of Snowball when he chases his rival off the farm due to their disagreement over the windmill. This brutal and violent episode sees the beginning, we're talking about structure there, of Napoleon's reign of terror and foreshadows against structure, his increasingly bloody acts which the animals are either unable to or unwilling to recognise. Throughout his novella, Orwell uses the seasons to convey mood, so I'm showing I understand the whole text there, I'm not just talking about this episode, I'm showing the whole text knowledge. And the setting of this scene is especially symbolic. I've got my um, points for language analysis. Winter foreshadows the decay and suffering the animals are about to experience. Indeed, just like in winter, storms com can come on suddenly, and Napoleon's eviction of Snowball is especially impulsive, revealing him as an animal driven by pride and emotion rather than logic and thought. So just as I mentioned earlier, I've gone on next to talk about graphic imagery. I've got my quotes. Remember, if you can't remember the exact wording of the quotation in your exam, don't panic, still use it. They will accept paraphrasing. Even just one word or one phrase um, will be enough to count as um, a quotation if you use a multiple um, amount of those. So definitely put them in, even if you're not sure of the exact wording. Um, I then put a bit about context. Now, I know that context isn't marked for this, and please, please do not prioritise context. However, in the examples we've seen from OCR, there has been some reference here. Um, so if it does fit, um, and it enhances your answer, and it links directly to the question, then you may wish to put a little bit in, but I would definitely not prioritise that. It needs to be your language analysis, your structure analysis, your form analysis, and your quotes. Okay? So... I then go down to explore the boxer moment, um, and again I'm making reference to form. This is a tragedy, Animal Farm is a tragedy. I've talked about cli uh, uh, climax, which is structure, um, and I've talked about how Napoleon exchanges his most loyal follower for a bottle of whiskey. And then I've talked about language, it's an evident symbol of the pig's descent into a life of sin. That's really important. Think about how the animals, um, in their decline throughout the novella, they're not just turning more and more uh, into humans, they're turning more and more into evil beings. They're smoking, they're drinking, they're partying, they're getting drunk. And that really does um, help to symbolise their descent into an immoral life. Um, I've talked about foreshadowing again, some structure, and about how mo a Boxer's motto is very ironic. Um, I then go on to talk about emotive language and the effects of that emotive language and what that reveals. It's really important that you explain your quotations in detail. 
I've talked about word class verbs um, and the use of cliffhanger when it says Boxer was never seen again. And in a way that makes it even more unnerving that the, you know, the subtle undertone there, or you might say obvious undertone, is that Boxer is going to be killed. But the fact that that's not stated explicitly almost makes it more unnerving. So um, we're talking about exposition here. So what's left out deliberately by Orwell makes us, um, you know, consider it even more. And then again, at the end, I'm summarizing my analysis of it by showing my whole text knowledge. I said that Napoleon's abuse of Boxer actually recalls old Major's claim that the animals are forced to work to their very last atom of strength under Jones's rule. So even though I've not explained that in particular detail, that is another moment there that links um, to this answer. So I'd be getting some marks for showing my whole text understanding. Again, I'm talking about the use of allegory. Um, I do mention a little bit about Russia, but I'm making this really extended um, point at the end that Orwell wishes to not only criticise um, Stalin, but actually the proponents of all evil leaders. Proponents means advocates, people that stand by and support um, evil leaders throughout history. And that the fact that he, he seems to be suggesting through Boxer that by stopping others, those that are evil, we actually need to look at ourselves. Because Boxer doesn't question um, his you know, blatant, the fact that he's being used by Napoleon. So I'm talking about the moral message there as being beyond the um, Russian Revolution, which you need to make sure you're doing. This um, really well-written text is not just purely about the Russian Revolution, it's about all leaders and giving us a warning about what we must do um, about those who, you know, abuse their power. Okay, so I hope that was useful. I've got, like I say, my language, my form, my structure analysis, I've got my key quotes, and hopefully I will have done everything that I'm supposed to be doing to get some good marks. Thanks for watching. Bye!